All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we talked about critter mitigation in an outdoor worm bin. And we also did kind of a clean out the fridge feeding. And with that, we just had an absolutely huge feeding with bananas and cabbage and kombucha scoby. And then we also put something that was kind of unusual. It was a big portion of banana stock from a banana tree in my yard that we put in here. But today we're gonna give them a special feeding. And that feeding is gonna absolutely supercharge this bin. We'll get to that after we kind of dig in here and check out the last feeding zone. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump in. And right away, I think we're running into that banana stock. So let's kind of pull it out and see how it's doing. There we go, kind of got it here. And we can see the worms are trying to get inside of it. Now we did not freeze it. We just kind of put it in. I cut it right off the stock and it was a banana stock that had died because of the freeze that we had. And I just put it right in without freezing it. And you can see the worms are actually going in through these little cells within the banana stock. That is pretty cool. And they're going right into the center. Now the center of this one had a banana flower stock coming out of it. What the bananas do is kind of their last dying act is they'll shoot up a banana stock flower right through the center. And that goes all the way the length of the banana tree. And I'm looking at it and it must be softer or more tasty for them because I see a bunch trying to get right in there. So this will be interesting. I think it's gonna take a while for it to totally get eaten. So let's just put that to the side and keep digging around to the rest of the feeding. Oh, whoa, oh my gosh. Let's get this out. Check that out. Now surrounding that banana stalk is where we had put the rest of the feeding and right inside here, let me guess, I think we have a crazy combination of banana combined with an avocado shell. And sure enough, check that out right there. Just a ton of worms. I'm gonna put them into this hand right here. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, wow. You guys are probably wondering why I'm putting it into a hand without a glove. I only wear one glove, one to save on gloves, but I dig with this hand, so I don't like to get um, dirt in my fingernails, so you see them on the video. So I usually just set stuff in here, but this is just so cool. And they are wiggling 100% all the way through this and into my hand. Oh my gosh, or I should say on my hand. That is awesome. <laughs> I love it. I'm just gonna put them on that banana stock right there. And let's just keep digging in here and seeing what else we've got. Now they really went through that feeding, all the other stuff that I put in here. We're gonna find things like avocado pits, that kind of thing. But most of the other stuff I think they've got through, certainly all the fast food like strawberries and any kind of leafy lettuce that I put in here. And here's another avocado shell with the pit still in it. And they don't care. They will just kind of go underneath it. And sure enough, a ton of them right in here. And I think last time we kind of gave fresh avocados, so they're kind of still eating the flesh out of it. I'll put that to the side as well. And then I'll just kind of dig. Every, every handful just has a ton of worms. Check that out. This is good. There's still lots of little food scraps in here. So this next feeding that I give them is gonna be pretty good for them because it's not gonna be the normal food that we give them like food scraps. Again, another avocado shell full of worms. Love it. I'm gonna actually let them stay in their Airbnb right there over here to the side. And I'm just gonna keep digging around here. This is just amazing. If you look just like every cubic inch of castings in here of bedding has worms all throughout it this is just a amazing bin and it is 440 days old and i've given 55 feedings and what i do with this bin is i harvest the castings out of it every week or two and it's actually i think been three weeks so you can see not a whole lot of carbon in here not a whole lot of shredded cardboard that kind of thing but what is in here is a lot of casting. So the next time I'm in here, I absolutely have to harvest because there's just a ton in here. And this is treated as a continuous flow bin. So I never like harvest it all at once. But look, I, I pulled that from the edge over here and just tons of worms and big old fat ones, all kinds of amazing red wigglers. And this bin is all red wigglers. Here's some from the edge. And even on the edge where it's slightly drier, they're still just all kinds of worms. And this fabric pot 
that these are made out of is just fantastic because it sheds water, but it also repels the water. The top of it I fold over and that repels the water when we have rain. So it actually helps to keep the water in and kind of keep the water out. It's just, just an amazing outdoor worm bin. Let's dig over here. And then finally I'll dig over here to this little corner. Now right here, it looks like I have found one of the two SCOBY halves, kombucha SCOBY halves that we have put in here. And it is a lot more pliable and there are certainly worms attacking it. So this thing is slowly disappearing. I can see little portions where they're kind of nibbling on it. So that's kind of interesting too. There's that SCOBY. All right, so we've kind of dug through the whole bin and I do that so that I make sure that it's fluffed up, aerated, and doesn't have any areas where it's kind of staying wet and stagnant and getting anaerobic. So let's go ahead and start our feeding. Now it's the beginning of April here in Florida, and one of the things that you might start seeing in your bins is this little guy right here. And this is a black soldier fly larvae. And this is the first one that I found in the bin so far. And maybe while we're sitting here, you can see him move around very slowly. But what these do is, they will kind of invade your worm bin and they eat the same thing the worms do, but they actually turn it into body size. So this thing starts really, really small and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you had a compost bin just of these, the volume would go down to about 25% of what you started out with. And these larvae right here produce a black soldier fly. And those black soldier fly are mimic flies. They actually look like a wasp. They don't fly around a lot. They just kind of sit on things and hang out near the compost and just kind of looking like wasps so nobody bothers them. So if you see this in your bin, it is not a problem. In fact, it will help to compost all your food scraps. So I'm just gonna let him go into the bin. All right, so back to the feeding at hand. As always, we add some shredded cardboard and paper, and that's just part of the carbon source that we feed them. The worms will also eat this. And then I'm also gonna put down some pulverized oats. I found some oats in my pantry that were about four months, or sorry, four years expired. And I've just pulverized them and I add them to all my feedings until I run out of them. But let's go ahead and get to the star of the show. And that is what's in here. This is actually not worm castings. This is compost from my hot compost pile that has kind of been sitting to the side and kind of aging. And this is actually gonna supercharge my worm bin because inside here are all kinds of microbes and actually probably other worms. I actually see a worm. And if you're wondering where you can get some compost worms, well, look in your compost. There might be some in there. But this right here has all kinds of microbes and bacteria and protozoa and all kinds of other things that will absolutely help to supercharge your worm bin. So let's go ahead and dump some of this in here. So if you start a worm bin, or even if you have a worm bin that is, you know, a few months old, if you put some of your regular compost, especially in an outdoor worm bin, it will really help the food scraps that you put in there to decay and will help with the microbiome that's inside your bin. So I tend to do this about once a month or once every two months, just to kind of give a, a whole nother set of microbes to my worm bin. So that's all the feeding that they're gonna get as far as food goes from me, because I want them to kind of eat everything else that's around here. And then when we come back, we'll just give them a, a really big food scrap feeding the next time we're in here. Now, of course, in addition to compost and almost all my feedings, I always add a little bit of coffee. But if compost is one of those things that interests you and you're into getting free fertilizer for your garden, you should really check out this YouTube channel that I found, and that is Clive's Conundrum Garden. Jason and Colleen over there do just a fantastic job and Jason is just an absolute compost wizard. You should see the videos on compost. I absolutely love them. Totally entertaining, totally energetic. And if you wanna see a steaming compost pile and how to get it like that, go ahead and check them out. I'll put a link in the description. So I think this is as far as we're gonna go as far as feeding. I'm really excited to see how that banana plant stock goes and then how the worms do with the compost that we've put in there. And you know, this bin is, like I said, 440 days with probably about 5,000 worms. So if you're wondering if you can just throw in tons of food scraps, make sure you supercharge it, make sure it's aged, make sure you have a lot of worms before you give any kind of feedings like you've seen me give in the past. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.